Hello and welcome to Oda Games. I'm Kevin Valine, joined alongside Logan Plant. How you doing, Logan? Doing well, Kevin. How are you? I'm doing good. We've also got Zach Ross here. How you doing, Zach? Doing great. It's the best day of the month. That it is. Uh, this is a pre-recorded episode, but Monster Hunter Rise should be out when this goes up. So it is. Yes, we are playing happy, Monster Hunter Rise happy right now. Monster Hunter Rise Day to you, gentlemen. Yep. Two weeks so we have not, we have obviously not played it yet, uh, yeah. but it's also Balan Wonderworld Day. It's so like four games. Out, it, it takes two that. days. It takes two is coming out. What yeah, it's day. it's a big day. Yeah. So yeah, next week we'll have a ton of Monster Hunter Rise to discuss. Yeah. But uh, as as for now, not going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite series of all time. Most specifically, Ooh. our top ten series of all time. A lot of series. That is, yes. We've probably talked about some of these like series. Thirty numerous series, times give or take. In the past, I'm sure that we have some overlaps yeah. of series. Uh, but why don't we hop right into it? Did you guys have any honorable mentions that uh, that you didn't get to put on your Legend list of Zelda? To? Okay, Legend of Zelda for Zach. I don't. Yeah, Legend of Zelda is a more recent series for me. It just, I don't know. It's not found its way into my top ten as of yet, but I do appreciate it. Okay. So I'd like to give it an honorable mention. All right. Logan, you got anything? Uh, yeah. yeah, I got a couple. Um, Monster Hunter only really cared about World and Iceborne, so maybe after Rise it could sneak into this list, but for now it didn't make it. Uh, Kirby is a series that was important to me as a, as a youngin', but I didn't quite make this. And then things like Dragon Quest, I also only really love one of, so... That didn't make it either. And Monkey Ball had a shot, but then it fell off a cliff, and, and it's not good enough to, to make it my dog. <laughs> Banana really Blitz. Just like the first two games. Yeah. So, Banana Blitz yeah, HD my... didn't change anything. <laughs> and I have a, I have a couple not. more that I thought of. Oh, all I right. thought of a couple more. Rip through them. <clears throat> Sonic didn't make my list, but I love Sonic. He's great. He's just oh, okay. his games are pretty bad. <laughs> they and, are um, terrible. <laughs> And the the Walking Dead Telltale series didn't make my list mm-hmm. because I really only care about the first one, a little bit about the last one. But, you know, it's a series, and one of my favorite games of all time is in it. So the although it didn't make the list, it was close. Okay. As for me, I've got two uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. I've played part of the first one and really like it and played all of Xenoblade 2 and its DLC. So... Uh, maybe when I get around to playing Xenoblade Chronicles through, it could get onto this, but as of now, it's not. And then this one I was agonizing over, Harvest Moon slash Story of Seasons, not the new Harvest Moon, uh, the older Harvest Moon games and the new Story of Seasons. But man, I now that Stardew Valley is out and just what they've been doing with the series, both Harvest Moon and Story of Seasons, I don't really care about it too much anymore. I feel like other series do it a lot better. So... Um, I left that one off. That was that was right up there at number ten because I did play that a lot as a kid, um, but didn't make it on there. All right, let's mm. start. Let's uh, start with number ten. I'm gonna throw it to Zach first. What is your number ten? I feel like I always go first because I'm the least important, but it's fine. I'll just go first. Okay. Thanks, so great. coming in at number <laughs> coming in at number ten. That's on you for feeling that way. <laughs> <laughs> That's just entirely on my in my head. <laughs> But it's, you know, it's cool. It's fine. I'm cool. So coming in at number 10, I have Jack and Daxter, um, classic PlayStation 3D platformer series that hasn't had a game in a very long time. So it's a bit of a dead series that people keep begging for new entries from uh, Naughty Dog, but they got more important stuff to work on. So I'm not, I don't feel too bad about it. Um, But growing up, played a lot of Jack and Daxter, really love the franchise you know the story it's always fun the characters are vibrant games are pretty distinct in terms of tone and how they play turning into gta type shooters or just strictly 3d platformers so it's it's a little jarring in that sense but they're all enjoyable i would say even though the second one is extremely difficult (laughs) it's extremely difficult but enjoyable in its own sense okay i I would say i think it's it's (laughs) <laughs> it's got some moments. <laughs> and then Jack X Combat Racing, which I also found very yeah. enjoyable. Um, so overall, very solid series. Um, definitely a bigger part of my youth since there hasn't been a new one. But I've gone back in more recent years and I platted the first one and uh, almost platted the second one. I uh, What did you have to do I for could, that? I, for... I couldn't... 
find it in me to get all the precursor orbs. Oh, <laughs> there there's like two hundred yeah. of them. Yeah. There is there's a cheat to do it where you can just like jump over a precursor orb, save and quit, reload, and just keep doing that to get unlimited. Oh, but cool. it takes like two hours, and I'm not I'm not gonna <laughs> do it. Not that dedicated to so, the plat. So that's my number ten. Uh, who's who's going second? Who's the second least important? Zach, you throw it. All right, Logan, over to you. Now, now we know how you feel about the hierarchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, my number 10 is, I, I almost didn't put this on the list because I think I, I had the realization lately that I only like the first half of, of the Pokemon franchise and the second half of the Pokemon franchise I don't really care for at all. So I still threw it at 10 just because of how important it was as a kid. I mean, we talked about it pretty recently with all the starters that we, we care about. And Pokemon was just such a big deal every year when it came out when you were a kid. From, I would say, like, the, the whole DS era, basically, from Diamond and Pearl to Platinum to Heart Gold, Soul Silver to Black and White. That, that stretch of four game releases was just really momentous when they came out, just yeah. playing it with friends and, and trading and catching and battling. So it's still on there. I'm hopeful. For the next year of Pokemon, like we talked about, I think Legends could be really great and excited to revisit Sinnoh in uh, Brilliant Diamond. But yeah, the second half of that, G really, Gen Gen 5 through 8, I just do not really care for whatsoever, specifically 7 and 8. Because five's good, 6 I like more than most, but 7 and 8 are, are just not, not for me. So it still had to be on there just for how much I played it when I was a kid. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've got some series like that on here. And the spin-offs too. Like uh, this kind of encapsulated everything. Like I love I loved Ranger. I loved Mystery Dungeon. Mystery Dungeon was a blast last year when that remake came out. So yeah, I think I think it belongs right there in the 10 slot. All right. My number 10 is in a similar situation to Pokemon. I was agonizing over to over putting this game on here or not, because really, I only like two of the games. I haven't played a couple of them. Uh Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I absolutely adore the original Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. I think they're really good RPGs. Uh, the one on the N64 really like set set the floor, and then Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door kind of took it to the next level, introducing more abilities with your partners. And I thought that that was what a sequel to to Paper Mario should have been. Just keeping keeping that formula that they had with the N64 game, improving on it in a couple of key areas, uh, was all they really needed to do. Then Super Paper Mario came out. I never really played it, but it sounds like the gameplay is hit or miss, depending on who you ask. But most people seem to like the story. Um, so it's got that. Then Sticker Star came out. I hate that game. Uh, I hate that <laughs> game so much. Couldn't even get uh -huh. through like, the first world. I found it incredibly boring. Uh, never played Color Splash. Don't really plan to. And then uh, Origami King. The more... The more time passes between playing that game, the less I like it. <laughs> like, like I it's like serious. the world. I like the music. I, the graphics are gorgeous. But the actual game, what you're doing throughout the entire adventure, I look back on less fondly every day. Mm -hmm. Just that battle system I do not like. Um, and, and the exploration is, is fine, but it's nothing special. But I think because of my love for those first two games, I had to put it on there. And since it's still ongoing, there is still that hope that they'll come back with an actually good game <laughs> after Origami King. I'm not holding out hope for it, really, but there's always a chance that they could come back with a good one. But I had to put that on there. Zach, number nine. All right, coming in at number nine, I have a one freak out, Kingdom Hearts, okay? Ooh, I, I enjoy here. Kingdom Hearts. I enjoy Kingdom Hearts as a series. I think that the... The copious amount of platforms that it has released on does detriment it and the story all over the place. It's uh, the games individually up until three were very good and, you know, distinct and they all had their own personality and they, they played differently. And sure, the first one didn't age well in terms of gameplay, but I think Kingdom Hearts 2 was a shining example of what the series could be. I liked every aspect of it and it was a you know, holding on to that level of quality for 13 to 15 years before Kingdom Hearts 3 came out. You know, I, I held this series in a very good light for a very long time. And even though I wasn't a huge fan of 3, 
I was right off the bat because I really the combat's very good. And when you're in the when you're playing it, you're like, this is a great game because you're more focused on the combat than anything else. And then you sit on it and the the how much you like the combat fades and you just start to think about the story and the story was terrible. Not good. It's <laughs> really bad. <laughs> and it's just it's it's sad to think about. So the more I think about it, the less I like it in terms of Kingdom Hearts three. But, you know, the first one, the second one, game drop distance, birth by sleep, all the mobile DS crap. I don't Cross care about but something five, else. eight days over two. You know, yikes, thir- 38 releases, re-releases, 2.8. It doesn't matter. Just looking at the main titles and some of the more key spinoffs or, you know, context titles like Birth by Sleep was a huge prequel that gives context to everything. I think it's a fairly solid series and I've liked it for a very long time. So that's why I put it on my list. You know, it's kind of a sad pattern that's emerging already. It's like, man, this used to be great. <laughs> now it's not. more. <laughs> but maybe that's just because we're at the bottom half of our list so hopefully yeah. it picks up yep. uh, my number nine used to be phenomenal and then it fell off a cliff and now it doesn't exist anymore and that's guitar hero mm. uh, i played so much guitar hero in i think middle school was really the peak of that for me mm. guitar hero 3 i think is the one that really took the world by storm and that was really the last good one it fell off right after three. There wasn't a good guitar hero. Because I felt like after three, more Rock after Band three? came out, and then Rock yeah. Band was uh-huh. the big deal, and then Rock Band fell off a cliff. I always preferred Guitar Hero to Rock Band. I thought that the, the controls just felt better. The guitars, I thought, felt better when you were actually playing. So I always preferred it, and Guitar Hero 3, the set list is just amazing. I still hear songs from it on the radio or on Spotify. I'm like, it just takes me right back to playing Guitar Hero 3, and... Yeah, I also love the multiplayer options in that. So that's that's my favorite one, and I've gone back and I played a ton of them. I played until the very bitter end. I played every guitar hero that came out after. For the three, one on the DS with the, like the little. I did play oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. You you hold it sideways. It just has the green, red, yellow, blue. It doesn't have the orange fifty. That destroy your hand. Uh, not really. It destroyed my touch screen from all of the strumming <laughs> oh, that you God. do. <laughs> yeah, but I love Guitar Hero and. I I wish that I don't have guitar with me right now where I'm living. I wish I had a guitar so I could bust that out and play one of the old ones. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I, I look fondly back on Guitar Hero Three. I never played any of the other mm-hmm. ones, but Guitar Hero Three mm-hmm. was was really good. And when that was out, by far the peak. I feel like yeah. everyone was playing. I feel it, like those old controllers like. got to be pretty expensive by now. They do. If you try to buy one of those, yeah, yeah. are they? And when the pandemic started, the controllers skyrocketed. People bought Rock Band and Guitar Hero. When the pandemic started, and now they're way more expensive than they were a year ago. It's really it's interesting. It's super funny because it's kind of like like that, the, the Guitar Hero guitars and Wii Fit boards, I just saw at Goodwills and Value Villages <laughs> yeah. all Gone. the time. So to see them go up in price is kind of funny. I don't think yeah. the Wii Fit board will be able to do that, but... <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> All right, my number nine is a series that has gotten a game very recently. Last year, in fact, I put Animal Crossing on here. Uh, I played so much Animal Crossing back on the GameCube. Uh, I remember getting together with my friends to uh, trade fruits, and like we'd like bring bring our memory cards over and all, you know, grab all the fruits and plant all that stuff in, get the statues, play the NES games that were in there. I always thought that was super cool that they just put a bunch of NES ROMs in Animal Crossing. Um, looking back on the original now, it it is very limited in scope. Beyond those NES games, it really doesn't have too much to go back to besides villagers that are uh, that have a little bit more personality, I guess. But in terms Absolutely. of gameplay, yeah. uh, in terms of gameplay, it doesn't offer too much now. Um, didn't play the one on the DS. City Folk was pretty bland. Uh, but New Leaf, I really enjoyed. I thought the idea of of customizing your your town with all of these different public works projects was a really cool step forward. And then in terms of that, New Horizons took it a step forward. Beyond that, in terms of being able to completely customize your island and terraform everything, uh, I don't go back and play it now. Uh, New Horizons, um, I had my time with it and it was done. But I think that. Looking back on the Animal Crossing games that I've played, there hasn't really been too many games where it'll come out and I'll just play it religiously for like a month or two, like Animal Crossing does. Most games, mm-hmm. most times when it comes out, like I'm gonna be there, even if, even if it doesn't have a ton of staying power, 
I'll still play it for a solid month or two before setting it down. And those month that month or two that I play it is a great time. Yeah, you know. it it absorbed all of us for about a month, and I think it absorbed most people who play yeah. it for about a month. Yeah, yeah. And New Horizons is great because it really pulled that series out of a sort of dark time with Happy Home Designer, which I heard was fine, and then Amiibo Festival. Uh, so. uh, Amiibo <laughs> Festival. Uh. Did not play. Yeah. Oh, I did play that. Played it once with you guys. It was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> It's really bad. <laughs> yeah. But there's one series where there's nostalgia from my childhood and uh, I can still play it today with new games and enjoy it. Yeah. Number eight, Zach. Yeah. Moving on to number eight. Yeah, yeah, number eight. Very similar in vain to my number 10. I've got Sly Cooper, which is another class- classic PlayStation 3D platformer. Uh, I do like the vibe and I've always liked this one the most out of all of those older 3D platformers. Um, and this one, I think, is a pretty solid trilogy. And it actually got a fourth installment on the PS3, unlike Jack and Daxter. Um, the It was handled by a different studio, and a lot of people don't really like it because it made some very terrible story decisions. But stylistically and gameplay-wise, I thought it was a pretty fun game. So overall, I hold the series in a pretty good light. I think 3 is my favorite, which is, I don't think it's anyone's favorite. I don't know why. I just like the stage, the levels in that one the most. I think they're the most aesthetically pleasing, and I like the bosses the best. So I think 3 will always be my favorite. It's also the one I've played the most been a long time since I've gone back and played any of them because Logan's been borrowing my collection for a couple years now, three, four years, five years, <laughs> yeah. something like that. Never get around to it. But... I haven't even known you for five years. <laughs> Eight years? But you've, you've had years? his game for that long. Uh-huh. Yeah. Apparently. Uh, but overall, fantastic series. And I I definitely want more. And I know there's a whole community on Twitter because I'm a part of it that wants more. But uh, we'll see. I'm not holding out too much hope. Sucker yeah, punch. I, I gotta we'll dive to into those for sure. Hop away from Ghost of Tsushima and <laughs> hop back into Sly Cooper. <laughs> no, we need a sequel oh, to that game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, my number eight. This is sad. This is making me sad. Another one that really fell off. It's Halo. Halo had a real <laughs> golden age in there uh, in the 360 life. And then ever since it went to Xbox One, I just have not cared for it. But those were some golden days of both local and online multiplayer in my childhood reach specifically that campaign and that, and that multiplayer I easily spent the most time with. And I like four more than most people as well. So that peak halo fandom was a really good time. Uh, Both playing with my dad. I played through the campaigns with him playing multiplayer with friends, creating your own stupid modes and just like going to maps, just one-on-one and doing your own thing was just so much fun in halo. And again, I, I have hope. For Halo, I think Infinite looks pretty great from what we've seen of it so far. There was some new stuff where I saw you can like push tanks off of the ring is like how you can kill them, which is a really cool new right. thing. So um, I'm, I'm just excited to see a more open Halo game with Infinite. And I think that it could hopefully recapture some of the magic from those 360 titles before it all kind of went wrong with with in some people's minds four and in my mind, Halo five. Yeah, three, four, three needs a hit. Yeah, yeah. Like- it, Halo 4, uh, it, some people may like it, but it didn't have that impact that either the original trilogy or Reach really did. Mm-hmm. 3, 4, yeah. 3 really needs a hit. Hopefully they get it with Infinite. Like, I wonder how much of a leash Microsoft will give it if they keep screwing up. Give it to somebody else. 343 <laughs> can't yeah. deal with it. <laughs> For sure. All right, my number, uh, my number eight. Oh, God, Bethesda. That'd be weird. <laughs> That'd be really weird. Uh, has already been talked about a little bit. I put Pokemon on here. That's purely nostalgia. I didn't even play the last one. Sword and Shield did not even care. Um, mm-hmm. Do not like X and Y. Do not like Sun and Moon very much. Didn't like the Gen 3 remakes. But basically anything before that, Gens 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I still enjoy. Uh, and I could still go back to and have a good time with. And I am very much looking forward to the Gen 4 remakes to see if that can rekindle some of my love for Pokemon um, because of its impact on my childhood and how much I played those games both alone and with friends. I had to put it on here despite mm-hmm. having not played it in a couple of years. But I'm hoping that at the very least with the Diamond and Pearl remakes that that'll be able to change a little bit. Yeah. I think we're all hedging our bets on that. For this <laughs> to, to get us back in. Yeah. <laughs> Zach, Perfect. Kevin. 
All right, moving on to number seven, talked about a little bit by Kevin, but I put Animal Crossing on my list. Uh, I've been a massive Animal Crossing fan since I was a child. I played a little bit of the original on GameCube, mostly uh, Wild World on DS. I got a used copy, um, and I just stole the guy's town name. It was Tiny Town. I've been using it ever since. I don't even know the person. (laughs) But but thanks to that guy, shout out. That's now my town name for the rest of my life. But I bought a Wii for city folk that's the reason i got a wii i don't know if i've ever said that but i bought city folk and the wii on the same day did you actually put a lot did i I really liked it okay i put a lot of time into it i wonder if that's because you didn't play the original because i feel like city folk Mm. is the original slightly better looking i barely played brawl (laughs) true yeah exactly i just it's all i've ever known skyward sword it's because you started with the wii (laughs) <laughs> and you're like, you didn't know how good the East Nintendo series were prior to the Wii. <laughs> so City Folk, I played for a very long time, New Leaf, long time. And then Horizons, I really enjoyed, you know, for a while and then put it down like everyone else did. Picked it back up recently. They're like, where have you been? I'm like, I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, but no, overall, the series. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See you again in six months. But uh, mm. overall, absolutely a flagship series in my life. Love it a lot. Um, it's just, there's no game that you can vibe with as much as Animal Crossing. It's just, you go in there, you chill, you fish. It's just such a such a chill time. I love it. It's really interesting. That I feel like Animal Crossing, you get so in, but once you're yeah. out, you never go back. It's yeah. like, we'll go back to check in, but it's like, it's like almost like a breakup where you're like, you, you keep in touch every so what often, you doing? but yeah. you just never never get back into that relationship oh. um, which is pretty interesting uh my number seven is the super mario franchise so i'm talking about the the core platformers both 2d and 3d uh played all of them at this point and just i just love mario just such a good platforming the 3d games specifically i i do enjoy more uh, galaxy galaxy 2 and then 3d world 3d land and odyssey i love all of those games Sunshine 64, not as much, but specifically Super Mario Odyssey, I think, is what cemented this series on this list because I've always enjoyed Mario, but I've always enjoyed like some of his spin-off outings a little bit more. But I feel like Odyssey just stepped it up to a new level for me where now I'm eagerly awaiting whenever a new 3D Mario comes out. Yeah, Odyssey was mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to whatever comes next, whether that's Odyssey 2 mm-hmm. or... Something Galaxy entirely 3. New. Galaxy 3, that'd be weird. I want an Odyssey 2. I really do still. I hope I'm that, still old now. Hope for it. I just hope that they use the capture mechanic in some way with whatever comes next, because I think that's a mm-hmm. really good idea that they could grow a lot from, just more and more yeah. captures. Yeah, I agree. All right, my number seven, a more recent pick. I put Ace Attorney on here. Uh, I've nice. only played the original trilogy. I'm waiting for whenever they put the other games on there and the Japan exclusive mm-hmm. ones. There's been rumors and and news that that they've been raided in taiwan for the uh for the japan only exclusive Mm -hmm. so there's hope that that more games are on the way for the west um but i really enjoyed my time with the original trilogy of ace attorney love the characters uh the cases are are really fun to solve and yeah it it was just a really good time and a bunch of the cases kept me gripped throughout the entire runtime i wanted to go back and i wanted to see where the characters went and um i'm just sitting here waiting for whatever comes next if they announce another game or at the very least announce some more collections that are coming over because they can't stop with just one two and three i've been waiting for almost five years for what comes next it's been a (laughs) long drought for this series but yeah i'm glad you i'm glad you loved it so much and you still have half over half the series to experience which is really exciting number six zach All right, moving on to number six. We've already talked about this a little bit as well. It's Pokemon. Uh, Everyone's put it on their list. I put it the highest because I obviously love it the most, even though I love the same amount as Kevin, the exact same amount, (laughs) Gens one through five. (laughs) And I hate everything afterwards. So, (laughs) But that Gen one through five, I put hundreds upon hundreds of hours into these games. So it is definitely a series that deserve to be on this list. Just... Yeah, that that collection of heart gold to black and white is just mm, so good. Diamond and Pearl, definitely looking forward to the remakes. Definitely see a revital revitalization of the series on the horizon. So hold out hope. I'm hold, This is the first time I've had hope in a long time for this series. 
I know, had hope Logan. when Sun and Moon got rid of the gyms. I had hope when it was coming to Switch for the first time, and it's like they have just kept on burning me. I had hope for the Hoenn remakes. Yeah, I feel like this is the this last is my time hope. For make or break with Diamond and Pearl and and Legends. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. If they're, if they're bad, then no more hope ever again. That I'll say that right now. But that's fair. That's I think it deserves the sixth spot. It, on my list just based on how much i played and loved the first five generations yeah for sure uh my number six i just mentioned that i like the spin-offs mario stuff more sometimes than the mainline stuff my number six is mario kart i have put so many hours into every mario kart game that has come out since i've been alive from I, I played a ton of 64 with my family when I was really little. And then from that point on, I've loved every single one, except the GBA one isn't very good. But DS, I got that with my DS. Um, seven, I got at Christmas, I remember. Mario Kart 8 was super hype because, I mean, it, it was one of the main reasons I picked up a Wii U in 2013 was for Mario Kart in 2014. And yeah, it's just so much fun. Lots of fun to play alone. Really fun to play with friends or family. And much like I just said about Ace Attorney, very thirsty for a new Mario Kart because it has just been ages. It's been seven years since Mario Kart 8 came out, and there hasn't really been a new one since then. Just got to play them mobile games and the weird the actual kart one. Yeah. yeah. Home yep. circuit. Yeah. AR. I need a Mario Kart 9, and I hope it comes to Switch, but who knows? I feel like at this point, it'd probably be a better idea to just plan for it to come to the next consoles, like either yeah. a launch, launch title, launch title, or a launch window. Yeah, that would be smart. But that'd be an incredible launch title. Yeah, who knows what they're doing with that? Yeah, my number six is a series that's been dormant for a long time. Viva Pinata. It is a series. Uh, you've got the two on the Xbox 360, and there's a one. There's one on DS that I played. Uh, <laughs> that is not good but uh i love it it's it's more what's it called pinata. pocket paradise i think okay is what it's called um i adore these games i really hope they come back in some way shape or form uh most people say that rare died after the microsoft acquisition but viva pinata still stands as as a really solid title in their catalog for someone who enjoys games like Harvest Moon, uh, Story of Seasons, Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley, Viva Pinata is another extension of that, of just a very chill game, of building up a garden and attracting all of these pinatas and being able to kind of design it how you see fit, digging ponds, planting trees. It's nothing that's going to blow your mind, but if you're into that sort of like simulation style farming game with a very stylized look with the pinatas, that game is still really gorgeous. And I really like it's classical soundtrack that goes along with it. Uh, you'll have a great time. And I love those games. Microsoft and rare get on it. We're into the next gen. Now bring, bring Viva Pinata back. <laughs> bring it back. dead. It's never going to happen. <sighs> yeah, probably won't. We're in the top five. Let's get yeah. into Our, Zach. officially. Top five is our number five. Confirmed the best series of all time in anyone's opinion. But my number five is only a series that I've played out of the three of us. It is the Tekken franchise. Uh, Tekken is, I think, 27 years old now, so older than I am. The first game came out on PS1 back in 1994, and they've got seven mainline titles, two tag spinoffs, a bunch of other spinoffs, and I've played every single one of them because... I really love this franchise and sure they haven't all been great, but they've all been very enjoyable and they're probably the reason I'm such a big fan of fighting games in general. Um, so definitely I've spent a lot of time playing this, you know, back on PS one, I played all of them. And then I think I technically started with three and then went back to the first two later in my life. Uh, enjoy it. Whenever I found an arcade version of them out in the wild, I would stop to play it. I just felt like I had to, um, because they're all a little different in the arcade versions and they're super fun. So uh, definitely the amount of games I played in this series is probably probably one of the highest in terms of just sheer number. It was a 9, 10, 11, at least 11 that I can think of off the top of my head. So that's impressive and deserving in of, of itself. So I think it deserves a spot in the top five. What's your favorite Tekken? Four because it's the best just because i th i like the aesthetic of it the most like the it's even got like the smallest roster too minus the like the first one but 
think it's I like it. I like it a lot. Nice. I've never played a Tekken game. <laughs> There's Doctor. a Tekken Tag Tournament 2 on Wii U that has like Nintendo costumes like Mario. I have not played <laughs> that version of Tag 2, but Tag 2 is also one of my favorites. Okay, cool. Maybe I should pick Mario. up a Wii U copy. Probably exactly. Should. Add it to the library. Uh, my number five series we've talked about so much in the history of this show. I put Uncharted at five. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I have nothing really new to add. So I just want to say that, man, I look at the fall of 2017 and every game I played that, that fall, because it was when I got my PS4, I played all four Uncharted's, I played Last of Us, and then Super Mario Odyssey came out. I don't think, I don't think anything will ever match that two and a half month period of video games in my life. I don't think that can be beat, because, yeah, that's, that's an incredible run. Yeah, that's. That is quality title after quality just title. Just wait for March 26th. From, just to see <laughs> Uncharted from start to finish like that in one fell swoop mm-hmm. and be able to hop over to Last of Us. And then Mario Odyssey comes out. Like mm-hmm. That is a list yeah, of games. Amazing. Right there. And then if you just look at 2017 as a whole and throw in Breath of the Wild and Splatoon 2 in there also, man, what a year for me and for games in general. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. 2017, what a year. Mm-hmm. My number five. Isn't zero done. I'm uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Love that game. Persona that, Five. Uh, Persona Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of Zero. That was. Yeah. That was, yeah. 18. yeah. 2017. That's the very start of the year. Uh huh. Year Automata. Year Automata. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look, you look at 2017, <laughs> and every time you look at, it, you're like, man, that year just. Like every time you look, you find something new. It's like, oh man, that came mm-hmm. out that I'm year. Sonic Forces. Speaking oh, of Sonic, real, those he's Sonic my number Mania five. Game. Sonic nice. is my number five. Oh, let's go. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Go. don't really like too many of his games. Uh, <laughs> Sonic Generations mm-hmm. is fantastic. Unleashed has some great day levels in it. Um, Forces exists. Uh, <laughs> and, and the adventure games have some crap, but they've also got some charm as well. But the reason I put... The reason I put Sonic on here is because without Sonic, I don't think this crew would be here doing nope. this show in any way. Yeah. Uh, we all knew each other a little bit before that, but I think that Sonic is really what kind of brought us together. And uh, mm-hmm. Sonic and brings people this, together, this, this you guys. Group. So I had to put it on here. I, Despite the fact that most of his games are quite bad, uh, even still playing through that with you guys has been a ton of fun uh, and just experiencing that and just playing through all of those games was uh Mm -hmm. was one of my best gaming memories and it's like the memories of bad sonic is so much better than like the memories of bad secret of mana because it's like with sonic i feel like there's always some sort of redeeming quality like a really good level thrown in the middle or a really corny cut scene that you remember because it's hilarious or just funnier glitchy moments it's when secret man is just like beating your head against a wall and it's not fun and it sucks and it's like sonic has these diamonds in the rough that that make the memories just really really great yeah yes so many little memories of freak outs or mm-hmm. just the game going wrong or <laughs> spirits unite <laughs> spirits spirits unite zach trying to platform off the pumpkins and the pumpkins would vanish and he just die <laughs> yeah after that's the number the one level. i think that's the number one sonic club moment of all time i think it's that level <laughs> i feel like oh god what was i think in unleashed at one point the the voice acting said book of something but the subtitle said that scepter of something oh yeah, six was, i was like really yeah. random and we like died laughing yeah <laughs> oh yeah. yeah there's there's Amazing some memories and there's stuff. some trials too like crashing halfway through Eggman Land and Unleashed and having to do all that again <laughs> uh, there's oh some my rough God. moments too uh, but even yeah. those even those I look back on fondly uh, just mm-hmm. because of the crap so I had to put Sonic on here at number five I had to put him in my top five somehow sweet Zach number four Oh, God. Number four. Moving on. All right. We're probably going to talk about this one a little bit more coming up, so I won't say too much, but I put Yakuza at number okay. four. I know Kevin's probably got it a little bit higher, <laughs> a little bit higher um, yeah. but this is a series that Kevin got me into. I played them all in fairly rapid succession, um, uh, zero all the way up until very recently, uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon. They've all been at least good. Um, some of them have been phenomenal and it's just been a crazy journey. I love the care. I love the over the top J drama 
feel of it. The stories are always so enthralling. The characters you just fall in love with. It's just what a series. Um, that's all I'll say because I know Kevin's got some some deep seated feelings for this yeah, series. Yeah, well, and we've talked about it a, a, at nauseum, We've talked about so it. I can't at say too much more, length, but so. we'll talk about it for a little bit later. <laughs> yes, that that would be my number four spot. Glad it cracked your top five. Oh yeah, my number four. Kevin just beat me to the punch. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh <laughs> yes, yeah. is my number four. I feel bad. Sonic yeah. was only my honorable mention. <laughs> at least you said. At least he was an honorable yeah. mention. At least you mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I've I've my earliest gaming memories apart from Pokemon and and Zelda and a couple others come from Sonic and it's like playing with friends in elementary school and middle school and then the whole franchise was just redefined for me in college with Sonic Club which I didn't think was ever going to happen. Like that's <laughs> it's so cool that that happened and like just playing through just these awful games together is probably my like yeah, definitely a top gaming memory. Uh, one of the most cherished for sure is just just plowing through this awful franchise and just experiencing it all. These things I had already seen, mostly some of the games I hadn't played, like Lost World, which I hated. I hated that <laughs> game. Uh, but and seeing you guys experience all this nonsense for the first time, it was great. Uh, getting to review Sonic Forces and play that. I played that. I've beaten that game like five times, which is ridiculous because it's really mediocre. But yeah, there's just something about like the, the rest of my franchises I think are like all phenomenal, like from, from here up, but it's like having a franchise is just not very good, but you, it's almost refreshing to look forward to something that you know is not going to be very good, but you're going to have a good time with it and make a lot of memories with it. And yeah, that's what, that's what Sonic does. Plus all the comics and the shows I've watched over the years. Like, yeah, I, I've read so many Sonic comics. Just this franchise as a whole has been really important throughout my life. And Last year was a disappointment. The year of news 2020 learned not. absolutely nothing. <laughs> so I'm hoping that something happens soon. And I know that I know we'll meet up again to to play it sometime in the future. Team Sonic Racing was another great Sonic yeah. club that, that we haven't fun. mentioned yet. That, that was, game's solid. Yeah, that game's good. Yeah. My story is, is really terrible, good. but <laughs> the gameplay itself of yeah. playing, they made that for Sonic Club. The the three man teams. Three like, people, yeah. Uh, yep. Perfect. Um, yeah, it was shout out to, stuff. but I love Sonic. Shout out to Sonic 06 for bringing us together because I think it all started mm -hmm. for me owning a copy of Sonic 06 that I Best had for one. years and never played it. And yep. was just like, hey, you want to play this? And then we all got together and yep. just took off from there. Yeah, that was the start. Kudos to Kevin for inviting me, even though Logan didn't want me to be there. I didn't know you. <laughs> I didn't know who you were. And, I knew you were that and guy you that sat next to Kevin in Japanese, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I, you Man. brought a Minute Maid lemonade to the first Sonic Club. How do you I remember, remember that? I just do. You had a bottle. I don't remember ever buying. Do you remember, ever you remember how buying. that tasted? <laughs> yeah. The pink or normal? <laughs> I think it. I think it was pink. Oh my god. Let's go. Okay. Uh -huh. That's a Minute Maid. <laughs> Sponsor. Oh, the games oh, the not brought to you by, by Minute Maid. Oh man. All right, my number four is a series that I hope gets a resurgence very soon uh, with the latest entry that we know is in the works, Saints Row. I talk about Saints Row a lot, try to keep the series alive. It's been a while since Saints Row 4. Uh, didn't really like Gat Out of Hell that much, probably because it wasn't optimized for 360, which I played it on. It was not very good. Um, but 1 and 2 specifically, you can look at them as, as GTA clones. Um, but besides GTA 5, which I think did a very good job of, of making it really fun to play, I think that Saints Row had those earlier GTA games beat in terms of just how much fun it was to play and romp around in. Specifically with Saints Row 2 and GTA 4 coming out at around the same time, GTA tries to go for that more realistic setting, and I think that just makes Saints Row 2 more fun to play because it's just more, more wacky. The cars control a lot better. Uh, they don't go for some, like, crazy crazy movie-like story. It's all tongue-in-cheek, really dumb, especially when you get to Saints Row 3 and Saints Row 4. Um, so it's not going to provide you anything deep, but in terms of of a fun world to romp around in, I think Stillwater as a town to drive around in has very distinct areas that are fun to explore, provide secrets and things to do, and and the story is enough to, to hold you through to the end of, of each game. I'm really hoping that Saints Row 5 is good, and I don't know where they're going to go from here. They could go back to 1 and 2. They could go back to 3. Saints Row 4 kind of, like, raised Earth on that with how it went. Um, 
but I mm-hmm. hold out hope for, for Saints Row 5 being very good. I put so much time into Saints Row 2, and I hope I can do that again whenever Saints Row 5 rolls around. Mm-hmm. Which one did they just like put on Switch? Three? Three. Four? Saints okay. Row the third, they've been doing a lot of remasters for. I don't think Saints okay. Row 4 is on there. Okay. If I had to I guess, they're going to go back well. to, to Saints Row 3 because that's the one that sold the most. But mm-hmm. <laughs> here's, here's hoping that it's still water. The banana Blitz effect. Come back. Yeah. Yep. I had to put it on here, it's though. It would be in the top five. Zach, we're into the top three. What's your number three? All right. Oh, real quick, honorable mention for Grand Theft Auto. I forgot about that series, but I've played the majority of them, and I've always had a good time. So honorable mention there where honorable mentions are due. But moving on to my number three, uh, we've got the Dishonored franchise. Uh, uh, again, I'm the only one out of the three of us who have played this series, but Dishonored is one of my favorite series of all time, um, especially the second one. There's three of them, two mainline titles, and one, like, two-thirds game, like the, the Lost Legacy of game. I don't know. We always just call them Lost Legacy games. I don't know what they're officially called. Expand like, uh, alone. Expand alone. Oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and there's an expand alone and a handful of DLC for the first game. But overall, there's nothing in this series that has ever disappointed me. Um, I've played the first game probably more than any other game in terms of replays, um, just because it's a fun sandboxy, do it your own way, you know, stealth game. And I love stealth games a lot more so than anyone else here. Um, yes. So, that's very true. It is, yeah, it's one of my niches. So I like it a lot. And I, I, you know, I now with the acquisition of Bethesda to Microsoft, I'll never be able to play Dishonored again because they're all going to be coming out to Xbox exclusivity, which is which is unfortunate. You, you physically cannot purchase an Xbox. No, I, I literally can't bring myself <laughs> to purchase. We'll play it on so, PC when it comes to PC. Yeah. Yes, I will have to do that. <laughs> but yeah, this this series has meant a lot to me. I think the lore is one of the the deepest and most interesting lores of a lot of the games i've played up there with witcher 3 so yeah, overall really not a lot negative to say about this series i just love it a lot if you're watching the video version of the podcast shot. uh zach's got shout outs to number four and three on his list on his wall he Which does see. oh yeah let's go <laughs> we've got yakuza right there dishonored mask right next to it yeah all right my number Dragon three Quest. <laughs> this is I'm, I'm flip-flopping what's two and what's three okay i'm gonna commit my number three is the legend of zelda this is the series has just been with me forever watching my dad play all of the new entries from uh, ocarina of time majora's mask wind waker twilight princess and skyward sword uh and then getting breath of the wild with the switch which i talked about a lot recently i just love the series so much i love how familiar they all feel while also mostly usually doing something entirely new and different uh, I love, even though I have issues with it, I love the shakeup with Breath of the Wild, the 2D remake with Link's Awakening on Switch, the Hyrule Warriors spinoffs, Cadence of Hyrule. They just do so much cool stuff with this franchise, and I'm excited to see where it goes next. But yeah, just I can I can always return to Zelda games. I play Ocarina of Time literally every year. Uh, that's I go back and play that. So this will be the 11th year in a row that I played Ocarina of Time. Uh, whenever I get around to it, so yeah, it just never gets old for me. Uh, the puzzle solving is just fantastic. The combat's fun and, and just the world and music and everything is always just so polished and clean. So yeah, Skyward Sword HD is not really doing it for me, but <laughs> I'm I'm really excited to, to see more from Breath of the Wild 2 coming up this year because I think that has a chance to be my favorite game in the series if 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 they make the changes that I think that they're probably going to. Potentially your favorite game of all time. Yeah, I could I could see it. Oof. Maybe. Number one is pretty deep, deep up there. So, yeah. Where is a Zelda in your top ten right now? Second, third. Um, I think Ocarina. I have it. Ocarina is it's in the top three. I think I don't remember if I have it two or three okay. right yeah. now on my list. Yeah. All right. My number three is one that Logan's already talked about, and I'm sure Zach's got it on here as well. Uncharted. Uh, I won't say too much more about it because we have talked about it a lot, but I will say that Uncharted has some very deep ties to uh, to my experience with PlayStation because I never had a PlayStation 1 growing up. A couple of friends had PS2s, but I never played it. I had a PS3, but didn't really care about it. And then when I picked up a PS4, Uncharted was the first game that I played. I got the trilogy and Uncharted 4 with my PlayStation, along with Until Dawn, which we did play. Um, we did so, play that. Yeah, that was solid. 
but I have so many good memories with the place uh, with PS4. It's got so many good games on it, and where it all started for me was the Uncharted series. I had all four games to play through, and just each one built on the last Uncharted 4 is one of my favorite games of all time. The set pieces that they throw into those games is fantastic, and uh, hopefully they'll do something with the series. I don't need to see Nathan Drake back. I think that they wrapped his story up pretty well, but... I, I don't want to see Uncharted go completely away. I think that there's still things that they could do with the series while mm -hmm. while leaving Nathan Drake to do his own thing. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Kevin. When I look at my PlayStation, I think of Naughty Dog games first and foremost as the primary experience I've had with that platform since I, I started with the four. I didn't own any PlayStations before that. So yeah, Naughty Dog is just tied hand in hand with what I think of on my PS4 and now PS5. Yeah. Yeah, man, they... <laughs> They're just making bangers left and right. Let's see what comes after yep, Last yep. of Us Part 2. Can't be stopped. PS5. Act 4 coming up. Get excited. Number 2, Zach. All right, coming in at number 2. Speaking of Naughty Dog <laughs> and speaking of games we have to talk to, talked about to death is Last of Us, which is now technically a series. It wasn't a series for a very long time, but now it counts and it's on my list because it counts because one and two are both incredible games. Of course they are. We we talk about them all the time. We love them so much. Just you know, visually, gameplay, narrative. It's just it's all so polished. It's it's amazing what Naughty Dog was able to do with these these really enthralling stories and all the improvements they made it on the first one with the second one. Um, it's just, it's just what a collection of games. I don't, I don't know if I want a third one. I said that about the second one. I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. they do make a third one, then I'm sure it'll be fine. At least fine. Hopefully good. Who knows? But I don't think they would make a third one if it wasn't going to be an amazing concept. If it's only mediocre. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like I said, we've talked about this series quite a bit, so you know our thoughts on it, but definitely deserving of the second and If you don't know our thoughts, spot on my listen list. to the spoiler cast of Last of Us Part 2. Ah, yeah. Exactly. We have an entire episode dedicated to our thoughts on that episode. game. So. It's like two hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like two it's episodes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually, I didn't put Last of Us on my list because just two games, I, I didn't put it on. Uh, I picked ones that I had longer histories with for more games than I played than two, but... Yeah, you, you know I love Last of Us. My number two, though, it's it's Ace Attorney. It's got to be. I it's This series is so good, it's almost ruined other visual novels for me. I go and play them, and I'm like, it's just not as good as Ace Attorney. And there's just something about those games that is just, to me, on another level. I, the writing, the story, the characters, something about it that just, just hits different. Uh, and I played them in a really weird order at first. I played every game in the series multiple times. I played a fan translation of the one in Japan, which is actually one of the best ones, Ace Attorney Investigations 2. I created a Clue board game with my sister with Ace Attorney characters. I've watched the Japanese movie, which is actually really good. Based, It's live action based off the first game. Uh, I, rec I actually recommend it after you beat the first game. Just go watch the movie. It's good. There's an anime, which has some original episodes. There's manga, which has original stories too, which are actually good. It's like, I think I've soaked up everything in this franchise that exists. <laughs> And they've got it. They've just got to give me more. That's all I can say is they've hopefully those great Ace Attorney rumors are true because I'm I'm chomping at the bit for more Ace Attorney because it's been almost five years since Spirit of Justice. But yeah, I'm glad Kevin's gotten into it. It's totally a series I, I thought he was going to love and I'm glad glad that he did. Uh, and yeah, excited for hopefully the future of the series. Yeah, when I think of visual, novels, I think Ace Attorney is first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that four of the picks on my list have movie spinoffs. I think that <laughs> Animal Crossing has a good movie. Pokemon has some good movies. Tekken has no good movies. And Yakuza has a great movie. All right. A, moving a on. great movie. Just, <laughs> just a Oscar worthy <laughs> film for Yakuza. Sonic has a great movie. Sonic does have a great movie. It's a solid movie. It's on Netflix now. Oh, so nice. Go check it out. All right, my number two is one that Logan talked about before. 3D Mario. Uh, so 64, Sunshine, the Galaxy Games. Uh, I, I'll i put 3D Land in there. I'll count that. 3D Land, 3D World, Bowser's Fury, 
and Super Mario Odyssey. Growing up with the GameCube, despite all the bogus of Super Mario Sunshine that uh, made Kid Me rage a lot, I still have a bunch of memories <laughs> with Super Mario Sunshine. I think mm -hmm. seeing it now in HD, that game visually holds up really well. And some of the concepts that they introduce in that with Flood and with some of the platforming that you do and the areas that you go to are are really creative. And I don't know if they're going to do that again. Like, it's very experimental with Super Mario Sunshine. I guess they kind of did that with Odyssey. Uh, yeah. But Sunshine is just very odd when you look at it in terms of the entire 3D Mario series. Going back and playing mm -hmm. 64 was a good time. Uh, Galaxy... Uh, I have a lot of memories from playing that on the Wii and the, uh, the re-release that came out in the Mario collection. And I think that playing that, the Mario collection again, uh, I like Galaxy more than I thought I did playing through it again and 100%ing it. Uh, I think that solidified that. Galaxy 2, I need to go back and play. Uh, 3D, 3D Land's a good time. 3D World, I'm still playing through, but I've had a bunch of fun with that. Bowser's Fury is great. And then Super Mario Odyssey was just on another level, uh, with... The levels with the music, with the capture mechanic, making everything fresh every time you go visit a new world. The amount of things to do, the amount of moons, everything is new. Uh, it's gorgeous. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to an Odyssey 2 or whatever is the next 3D Mario game. Uh, this is probably the most excited I've been for a Mario game was after Odyssey yeah. came out. And now with Bowser's Fury was... out too, like, that, is, that has yeah. gotten me even more excited. Odyssey was kind of under the radar for me. Like, I was excited for it, but I wasn't, like, so hyped for it. And then it just, I think that's part of the reason that it just blew me away. Because, like, yeah, I'm going to pick it up on launch. It's a new Mario game on this shiny new Switch that's only six months old. But, yeah, now I'm more hyped than ever because of just how good it was. Yeah, so good. All Zach right. will know soon. <laughs> You're going to get there. You're going to get there. I will. Number one. We've made it. All right, Zach, moving on. It? So I, I does it really need saying at this point? I feel like everyone knows my favorite series of all time is Castlevania. Let's go. It's okay. not Castlevania. I've only played one Castlevania. It, I'm sure it's a great series. I'll get there eventually too. But of course, my favorite series of all time is Uncharted. I've been a big Uncharted fan since 2011 when I first got my PS3. Came with Uncharted 2. I waited for Uncharted 3 to come out. I waited a very long time for Uncharted 4 to come out. You know, I, I played Lost Legacy with Kevin. That was a great memory. I've fun. played 4 with Logan. That was a fun time. Yeah. I've, you know, on beating hard. on hard, you know, beating played. 4 and Lost Legacy by myself on crushing. crushing. Some good memories uh, just, of, uh, of watching you jump off that boat 8 million <laughs> times. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing that those games have some amazing memories attached to them. And I, you know, I've, I've played them a thousand times over the, they always hit those emotional beats. They're always extremely fun to play gameplay wise. They're just, there's nothing bad about them. I love them. And they're one of the most formative, you know, gaming experiences of, of entire genre. So unsurprisingly, my number one, and will probably be my number one until the day I die. Yeah, we're all so predictable, all of our number yep. ones. It's like, yeah. no. duh. Ask me again in 45 Obviously. years. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. Let's see where we're at. Uh, my number one, Super Smash Brothers. Duh. <laughs> Every time a new Smash came out, with the exception of Brawl, I liked it more than the last. I liked 4 more than Melee. I, liked, I hate Brawl, I Brawl, like man. Ultimate more than 4. Yeah, I, I don't like Brawl very much. But I still played it for like hundreds of hours <laughs> and still have good memories because that was like middle school, go over to like birthday parties, and you'd always play Smash Brothers. Um, but yeah, just the way that the series continues to evolve, adding eight player smash, uh, adding all these characters from all over the place. You never know who the heck's going to show up next. It's just so much fun to follow. The amiibo addiction was fueled by Smash Brothers. There's nothing else that would have gotten me to invest that much time and money into into figures. But I did because it was Smash and I will continue to do so. Uh, but yeah, I talk about Smash all the time. So my number one so let's go on to kevin's obvious number one my obvious number one of course it's yakuza i've mentioned it many times before and zach kind of alluded to it as well and we've talked about it ad nauseum whether a new game's mm -hmm. coming out or we're just talking about yakuza because that happens because it comes up in the news from time to time um but like zach said every single yakuza game is good <laughs> every single mainline yakuza game is at least good uh some are absolutely exceptional with their stories and with their side content um, but wh whatever Yakuza game you pick up and want to do, it's going to provide a good story with a bunch of 
fun and interesting side activities to do, whether you're just going and playing the arcades, whether you're going to, to, you know, go bowling or something, or whether you're doing the sub stories or whether you're doing some of the mini games that they provide. Um, Yakuza has some of the widest array of content that is actually good out of any series that I've ever played. And if you just want to mm-hmm. beeline through the story, you can do that too and have a fun time with all the really good stories that are there. And hey, I even like Dead Souls <laughs> for what it is. <laughs> and I'm hoping that they bring the the samurai spinoffs, Kenzen and Ishin, over to the West at some point because I think those deserve to see the light of day. I've heard that Ishin is one of the best Yakuza games that ever came out and it's not out in the West yet. So here's hoping they do a collection of, uh, of Kenzen and Ishin at some point in the future. Um, but... Weird how similar that is to the Ace Attorney thing. <laughs> Two games that take place in the past that people say are some of the best ones in the series. I guess it's just harder to localize uh, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Or limited appeal. Yeah. I'm not sure. But uh, I hope those come out. Uh, and Yakuza is one of those series where I'm just chomping at the bit for the next game. And as soon as that next game is announced, I'm waiting for it every day. New information comes out. It's one of the, the few series where I'm just on top of it from the day the game is announced to when it comes out, and then I'm playing it right after that. Love it. So good. Kev, we are thriving with our number one franchises of all time. Yakuza gets a new game like every year, and yeah. Smash is still getting new content like every two or three months. So we're thriving. Uncharted, it's been a while, but it, I think I, it'll be back. I feel like even if it doesn't come back, I'm content with all of it as a whole a solid yeah. quadrilogy of games and uh and lost legacy in there as well is a really good time golden abyss yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Zach, you ever gonna play that if, i mean if i ever have access to it a logan Bar- i can grant yeah. you that access <laughs> it's he your number one series of all access. time i feel like you need to play mm-hmm. it if it's your yeah. favorite series of all time i know it's just Spinoffs made by other studios always have this weird feeling to but them. But it's by Bend. It's like Days Gone. Days gone. True. Days gone. Bend has my favorite game of all time. <laughs> Days, Days Gone. Oh my God. But it's God. I just had an example in my head, and I already forgot what it was because I got distracted by Days Gone. That always <laughs> happens. I just start thinking about Days Gone, and it never uh, leaves. The Jack and Daxter game that everyone hates, The Lost Frontier, or whatever. That's a good example, actually. Yes. Um, the the Sly Cooper one was okay. Mm-hmm. Just had a very specific example in my head, and I've, I just immediately forgot what we it was. We did no well, two segment about this, so you can go back and find that one. That's true. <laughs> well, Zach, can listen <laughs> yeah, crappy spin off. You can go yeah. back and listen to that. All right, that's going to do it for us uh, on this week's episode of Ode to Games. Next week, Monster Hunter Rise. Logan, Zach, you, yeah. you ready for that? I think very ready. I, yeah, absolutely. Are you ready for twenty minutes? I'm just gonna sit back. In week? fact, I could probably just not show yeah. up for the first twenty minutes. I can go get some food. <laughs> you don't have to like, be there. Like, yeah. Just hit me up and I'll, I'll join in like twenty some minutes mm-hmm. in, because uh, I know that's yeah. gonna be be the focus of the show. Very excited. That's that's almost here. So, mm-hmm. both uh, yeah. listeners and uh, Logan and Zach, I'm sure looking forward to. Uh, to next week's show but that is it mm-hmm. for this week's episode of ode to games we're here on fridays although that may be in flux so uh yeah uh, we'll find keep, out keep an eye out on that we have been on fridays but that may change so uh keep an eye on that but we are here on apple podcast spotify other podcast streaming services that you may use audio version of the podcast is up on our website as well ode to games.com Video version of the podcast is up on YouTube, so you can check it out there, Ode to Games as well. We're on Twitch, Ode to Games, Twitter, at Ode to Games as well. You can send an email to Ode to Gamescast at gmail.com. For Logan and Zach, I'm Kevin. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week.